Hello Kingdom family, and welcome to tonight's special preview of part 2 of the Kingdom Productions Network exclusive documentary, Unholy Alliance. This preview features an excerpt from one of the main experts from the documentary on the Knights Templar and their association with the occult and Islamic order known as the Order of Assassins, or Hashishin. The expert you'll hear from tonight is none other than Gary Wayne. Before Gary speaks, I'll be playing a brief excerpt from a video from Robert Seffer on the deity that the Templars were accused of worshipping before being put to death. The Baph met because I used a brief portion of one of his videos. I'll leave a link to the entire video in the description. I certainly do not recommend Robert's videos or content except for his 2015 book 1666 Salvation Through Sin, and I only recommend it for research purposes. Now let's get this program started. It has been said that the Baphomet was regarded as a god by various groups and organizations such as the Knights Templar. It is most famously portrayed as a goat-headed deity with a human body, harboring both male and female attributes, an androgen, representing perfect balance, a union of opposites, and illustrates the old cryptic saying, as above, so below. The word hermaphrodite, incidentally, comes from combining the words Hermes and Aphrodite. This symbolism is further expressed and the sixteenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the ayin, meaning I. It's also the sixteenth letter of the Phoenician alphabet, which gave us the origin of the Greek and Latin letter O. The perfect circle it is also symbolic of balance, as well as an ancient and universal symbol of unity, wholeness, infinity, and the goddess energy. It represents the female spirit or divine force. The dot in the center of the circle, in some esoteric occult interpretations going back for many millennia, represents the male force. So combined, the circle and the dot symbolize the spiritual merging of male and female polarities. Ein is for I, and indeed its ancient pictograph symbol is that of an I, which can still be broadly seen on what is popularly known as the Hamza, and other places. The word pyramid comes from pyro, meaning fire, and mid, meaning middle. To secret societies and ancient mystery schools, the Ein represents the goat of Mendes. The last Sabbath of the Roman month of December falls on the Germanic pagan festival of Yule, which the Roman Catholic Church transformed into Christmas. It may surprise some Americans to learn that the goat figures prominently in Scandinavian Christmas, still called by its original pagan name of Yule. The origin of the Yule goat goes as far back to pre-Christian days 
where goats were linked to the pagan Norse god Thor, who rode the sky in a chariot drawn by two goats. According to Norse legend, when Thor killed and cooked the two goats, their flesh provided sustenance for the deity and his guests, following which Thor resurrects them with his hammer the following day. There are many variations on the common theme. In Finland, the Yule goat was an ugly creature that frightened children and demanded gifts at Christmas to be placated. During the 19th century, its role shifted towards becoming the giver of Christmas gifts. In Finland, as well as the rest of Scandinavia, with one of the men in the family dressing up as the Yule goat. The goat was replaced by Father Christmas, or Santa Claus, at the end of the 19th century. Christmas wasn't even celebrated in the U.S. until the mid-1800s because it was considered a pagan drinking holiday of revelry and, in some cases, orgy. Christmas trees, candy canes, even Santa Claus seem like they've been around forever. But many of these Christmas traditions are surprisingly recent. Brother Gary, um, what I wanted to ask you most of all was basically just a broad question that will give you plenty of time to answer and that is what do you know about uh the original knights templar that has to do with their practicing um the dark arts anything that they were accused of as well as um did they have to your knowledge, any association with the Sufis or the Order of Assassins, the Hashishan? I would uh, I would advise people to take a step back when you're analyzing the synthesized uh, superficial strain that we get for the Knights Templar as an organization. Typically, they're presented to the uh, novice as nine poor monks within Catholicism that decide to, to become fighting warrior monks and to be protecting pilgrims uh, on their pilgrimages to Jerusalem in uh, just before 1100 A.D. So between, let's say, 1050 to 10 to 1100 in that zone where there's a lot of pilgrimages going on and there's a lot of attacks going on on Christians that are going to Jerusalem by by Muslims and other other groups. So that's, that's a ruse. Um, number one is that the Templars weren't required to, to have to do that to protect the pilgrims um, because the Knights of St. John, which was created in 1043, had already been created as a knight order to do so and was already doing so. So we need to understand that the Knights Templar story that we get is just pablum for public consumption. And we need to understand who this organization was, what's their connection to modern secret societies in the uh, coming end time, as well as what is their real history and what is their core beliefs and their core religion, because they're presented as a Christian order, complete with papal bull, effective in 1128 at the Council of Troy, but they weren't. They were the typical organizational structure that we see to organizations today uh, that is polytheist-centered. So whether it's a secret society like Freemasonry, which has its roots, the modern organization in the Knights Templar in the fall, in the decentralization, you have the adepts at the top and you have the lower levels who are considered mundane, who don't know the true secrets and don't know what the adepts are doing. And that's just the beginning of the hierarchy to the mystical religions at the third level of the old system. York, as in Freemasonry would call it, 
equivalent to the cognate 33rd degree of the Scottish Rite. So they were polytheist at the core at the adept level. And this is a group that's going to be resurrected as an ancient knight order. And it is an order that goes back into polytheist history um, and back to and a more modern timing as of the resurrection would be the order of Constantine that had a red cross that came about at the time of Constantine. And this is a re resurrection of that order of the red cross that the Knights Templar are going to receive. But the, the Knights Templar are, are all royales and uh, mostly French royales. So they're not poor monks. There are two Cistercian monks that are there, but they're relatives of the other nine or the other seven royales, so to speak. And so these are all the nobility elite. And the Cistercians are a Gnostic order that's molded into Catholicism. And it's the monastic order that is based on the ancient Essenic monastic order. Uh, that is used for all of the monastic initiatory organizations that mold into Christianity and into the Roman Church in particular, whether or not it's the Augustines, it's the Franciscans or the Jesuits. They're all Gnostic, they're all initiatory, they're all polytheist. And so we need to understand that these Cistercian monks are monks that are you know, would have a high level within the church if they wanted to, because the black nobility is also made up of 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 royals, and the royals are sponsoring and getting in most of the popes, whether they're not if they're of the of the loyal uh, version of popes or whether or not they are of the polytheist belief system. But they're all royals and they're all educated. So when we look at the names like Godfrey de Bouillon and Hugh de Payon, that's the Anjou bloodline of Lorraine. Um, and you also have Andre, Andre Montabard. And I'll just go through some of the names. Hugh de Count of, Ch of Champagne, Geoffrey of St. Omer, Payan de Montefer, Archambault de St. Arnaud, Geoffrey Bezel and the folk of Anjou, also of the Lorraine region. There are different strains of the Anjou, but this is the Lorraine strain. And they are all royals and they were formed for a purpose. And so the ruse is, is to gain access to Jerusalem, but they have to take Jerusalem first. And so Godfrey de Bouillon and and Hugh de Payan and his battle partner, Henry de St. Clair, which is an ancestor of the founders of the St. Clairs are going to restart uh, Freemasonry as an organization uh, with fleeing Templars uh, at the takedown of the Templars in 1307 when they flee to Scotland under the protection of Robert the Bruce, who has already been excommunicated from the church, the Roman church, for killing his rival in a in a Catholic church. So these are all royals. And in 1090, the Bullion and his center organization is going to go to Italy in preparation to organize for the Crusades. And they're going to meet with the Calabrian monks, another Gnostic order within Catholicism, who were sponsoring Pythagorean mystery schools. <laughs> mystery schools are Gnostic polytheist schools, just as the schools are polytheist today, um, but not necessarily called a mystery school. 